investing in America when privates go public. When 16-year-old Ali sexted her ex-boyfriend, I was in the middle. I was on the side, and I took the picture. He forwarded her topless photo to all of his friends. She was devastated. I felt really betrayed because it was only meant for him. She had no idea just how bad things would get as the picture made its way around her high school. The harassment just started immediately. Kids in my school were really brutal and terrible to me. In the hallway, they would call me whore, slut, hoe. A girl stood on a table in the cafeteria, and she was like, Allison is a whore. Girls would threaten me either on the computer or they would send me text messages. So I was always scared that I was going to get beat up. According to a recent MTV poll, 68% of people do or say things digitally that they wouldn't do in person. I went to high school with Allie and sent her a really angry text message saying the same thing that pretty much everyone was saying, calling her a slut and a whore. Over I am, I did threaten to fight her because when my boyfriend received that picture, I was really angry with her. That's not something that I wanted my boyfriend to see. Someone rolled a tire down my front lawn and into my glass door. At one point in time, there was a tire rolled evidently all the way down a big hill. Actually went up and damaged the awning here, which you can still see some evidence of that. Come to think that that was a result of this whole incident. The picture really affected my entire family. We had to go to therapy for it. Because of Allie's sexting incident, she suffered a lot of consequences. Being tormented at school, she suffered anxiety. These sort of incidents leave scars that can affect somebody throughout their lifetime. Sexting is a largely growing legal problem, and the laws just can't keep up with the technology. A photo that starts off as flirtation can quickly become a federal offense. If the images are taken of somebody under the age of 18 federally in the United States, they can constitute child pornography. If you take a picture, you can be accused of producing child pornography. If you send it to somebody, you can be accused of distributing child pornography. And if you keep a picture, you can be accused of possessing child pornography. Anywhere along this chain of transmission of the images, you can be charged as a registered sex offender. Believe it or not, many sexting teens have been slapped with child pornography charges, including 20-year-old Orlando resident Philip Alpert. I started dating uh, my ex-girlfriend last day of uh, ninth grade, and we were together for a really long time. She sent me naked pictures when she was 16 and I was 17. I don't even think that I asked for them. A month after I turned 18, we just got in a big fight. She called me in the middle of the night and left like this really nasty message. I got up at like three something in the morning. I had her email and I just went into her email, I uploaded a couple pictures and I just hit the little select all button and I hit send and I went back to sleep. Because of Philip's rash decision, his 16-year-old girlfriend's nude photos were sent to over 70 people, including her friends, teachers, parents, and grandparents. Philip was then arrested for child pornography distribution, was put on five years probation, and required to register on the public sex offender list. I've been registered as a sex offender for about two years now. My name and my information is available to anybody. This has everything from my hair color, my eye color, my weight, uh, my exact address, which is great. I've actually had a lot of uh, neighbors come to my door before, and they were coming to check to see if you know, it was safe for their kids to play around outside, you know, with, with me here. I'm not allowed to live near a school or playground or church. I live here by myself, uh, though. I feel it'd be much easier on me to live like maybe with my dad, but uh, he lives too close to a high school. The college I was going to sent me a letter that says I'm not allowed to go back there because I'm registered as a sex offender. I don't have a job. I can't find anyone who wants to hire me. Back there is where I go to my weekly sex offender treatment class. Usually we just talk about 
almost common sense things like literally why it's bad to rape someone to go to a sex offender treatment class designed to treat sex offenders of their deviant sexual orders towards children is not something that applies to me, yet I'm still forced to go and to pay to go every week. Philip will be on the sex offender registration list for decades. And what we're trying to do is convince the court that Philip should be removed from the sex offender list because it's not related to the kind of offense that he committed and it is preventing him from becoming a productive member of society. I'm extremely sorry for what I did, but the sex offender thing, which is going to last until I'm 43, that I think is more is like overkill. You know, it's more punishment than I deserve for what I did. For information on laws about sexting, go to athinline.org. Next, Allie tries to put the photo behind her. No matter what, the picture is always there in the back of my mind. It was the biggest mistake of my life.